Hello everyone. I'm going to cover a little bit more on a couple of things I did uh, during my keep and uh, see if it makes sense to you. And, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, some of the stuff like always, you know, because I talk about the same things a lot of times or things related to the same things a lot of times can be repetitive or sound repetitive, but I always try and add something else, you know. So during my keep, you know, I, I wanted to build up the dog's air first, then work on their strength, because I believe a dog can't do hard work if he doesn't have good air. And most dogs have good air in that sense. Uh, but, you know, you want to improve on it as much as you can, because uh, again, back in the day, it was a high stress situation, you know. So you wanted them to, the hope is that they would be on their feet for most of the show or all of the show. And what I mean by all of the show, mostly on their feet. Some are going to get knocked down, turn around, they're going to, they could be flipped and all that. But you want them to try immediately come back up to their feet. But you want them on their feet for as long as possible so they can do what they want to do. And that was the uh, all, what I always had in my head when it came to conditioning dogs. So I would do my road work, and I'll repeat this again. When they start the road work, they're going to hit a hot spot, have to catch their second wind. Then they're going to recoup on the fly. I used to time that, how long it took them to recoup. After the workout is done, I'm going to walk them out, for them to cool down. I used to record that time too. How long did it take them? And as you progress through the keep, you want that recoup time after that first burnout to become shorter, <clears throat> to become, uh, you want the first burnout to take longer, is what I mean. So let's say you're working them and it, they blow out in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Right. As you progress to keep, you want them to uh, burn out in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half hour, like that, before they have to catch their second win. After the workout, it's going to take them several minutes to cool down. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like that. As you progress through the keep, you want that time to shorten. Five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, like that. So that's, that's what helped me determine how good a shape my dog was in. But also, it's the way I work my dogs. So when I started the workout, uh, I wanted them to start fast, start running right, right away, which meant, of course, beforehand, I had to walk them out so they loosen up, stretch, you know, get their, get their uh, you know, any, any kinks out of their body right? Empty out, piss, dump, all that stuff. Be ready for a workout because when I started the workout, it was let's go fast. Start off fast, meaning running. Then during the workout, they'll hit their pace, recoup, increase it, lower it back and forth like that. And I basically let the dog determine that. But when he did increase the pace during the workout, after the slowdown, that's when I would encourage him. And I encourage them in the beginning, let's go, boom, 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 like that. Not constantly talking to them, not all the way through. And when they slowed down, I didn't tell them, let's go, hurry up. I just let them do it, kept my mouth shut. When they increased the pace, I encourage them. That tells them they're doing good. That's that bonding, that connection we have with the dog. And back and forth like that. And also, you know, after the first week, because the first week, the increments are more steady right so you start at a certain pace and next day you might up it a little next day like that but once after that first week once i kind of got it going i would increase the workouts every three days that was just my way of doing it and i did that because as i increased the work the first day that's their introduction to it second day they're kind of getting used to it third day they they are used to it and uh, uh, they go through it smooth, right? But 
one thing with that also is on the third day of the increased work, when we're doing the road work, I wanted them to run that same distance faster. So let's say it takes uh, 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes to run. Let's say it takes 45 minutes to run five miles, right? That's, that's the, the, the regular pace of the dog when I first start that five mile run. 45 minutes, that's the average time. Do that. Second day, they may do it in 45, 44, somewhere around like that. On the third day, I want them to hit it hard. So they're doing the same five miles, but I want them to do it in 40 minutes instead of 45. Same distance, but I wanted that increase in speed, that increase in work, that shorter time to run the same distance. That's one of the ways I measured their air for how good their conditioning was. And from the first day increase to the third day of doing that same distance increase, after the workout, I want that cool down time to be basically the same. If it took five minutes on the first day, I want it to take five minutes on the third day, even though the speed has increased, the, 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 the uh, time has decreased because they're running faster. I want that cool down period to be the same, relative to the same amount of time to cool down on the third day as it did uh, the first day. And then I would progress through the keep like that up until Depending on the dog, I got them up to 8 miles or 10 miles total. That's their distance I'm going to run to uh, build their air up, and that's it. So whatever time it took them, once I peaked them out at the 8 miles, I wanted that third day of the 8 miles to be faster than it was on the first day of the 8 miles. And the cool down period relatively the same. That's how I judged it. From that point on, I went to the strength work. And basically, the first four weeks, I'm doing the road work, I'm running them. Uh, the next four weeks, or actually three and a half weeks, uh, that's, where I want, that's where I'm building the strength up. And then the last week, I'm finishing them off. I'm going to do a, another vid. Next vid I do will be on the, the last week. Peaking them, maintaining weight, water, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, people might think, well, if you do that with the road work, that's what you're going to do with the strength work. And uh, no, it's exactly the opposite. So the strength work I'm going to do, it's the same process. Empty them out, start doing my bait work. You know, I have all this in my keep, and I'm just explaining it more for uh, people that have bought my keep and have questions about it, you know, and that's the one thing you can always ask me. Always ask me. I've had good feedback on it. People say it's successful. Uh, they like it. It's helpful. You know, they can use mine or develop their own from it because a lot of it is paying attention to the dog, the breathing, the heart rate, all that stuff. Things to look for. How to work a dog. So with the bait work, the strength work, uh, same thing. I'm gonna empty them out. We're going to do the strength work a certain amount of time. And again, <coughs> uh, uh, starting with that strength work, I'm going to hit them a certain distance. Usually it was a half a mile. That's it. Pulling, you know, uh, uh, building that strength on that first day, uh, just a half a mile. But, uh, uh, you know, one of the things about that, too, is, is I'm going to time it, or I'm going to time especially that strength work. You know, I'm, I'm going to time it and see how long it takes them, right? So I got them doing a certain distance, right? 
same thing after three days I'm gonna increase the distance and even from the first day I'm gonna hit that distance and see how long it takes them next day I'm gonna do the same the same distance see how long it takes them but on the third day even though I'm doing the same distance I'm holding back on them more and it's gonna take them longer to do that distance I don't want them to do that distance faster. I want them to do it longer, which helps build their strength up. So if it took them 10 minutes to do uh, that strength work, right? On the first day, on the third day, I want it to take them 12 minutes or 13 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever it is. Same thing when I increase the work, it's gonna take a certain amount. So at the peak, of the workout which mine was about four miles right nothing but strength work that's it it's gonna take them a certain amount of time when I hit that four miles I'm gonna time it on the third day same thing I'm gonna time it but I'm gonna hold back make them work harder and it's gonna take them longer to do that four mile peak and that's what I'm looking for so that's what I mean it's totally the opposite and by doing that, it increases their conditioning. They become, uh, they, they, they're in better shape. So the first part running, as I go along the keep, I want them to do that same distance faster, but I want them to cool down at the same time. Second half of the keep, I'm building the strength. And as I increase the distance, I want them to do the same distance on the third day as I did on the first day of that increase, but I want them to take longer. And I manipulated that, I forced that, right? And one of the ways I did to keep them interested was I had my son walking in front of me and I had my dog behind him with a harness and a lead and he's pulling to get at the other dog. So to make sure he doesn't lose distance, I would have my son increase the distance in front of us or get closer to us. When he gets closer to us, the dog's working harder, but I'm holding back more. I'm not letting him get at the dog. And sometimes I would let him get at the dog, let him get a little closer, and then have my son move up farther away and just do that back and forth. And when they want to slow down and pace themselves more, we just kept that same distance and he's working that pace. When he want, when he's recouped in that sense and wants to increase it, I tell my son to back off, hold my dog, and the closer he gets to my son in front of me, the more I hold back on the lead. That's what causes the increase in time that it takes to do that workout but it's the same workout and then again after the workout cool them down I want them to to recoup to cool down in the same amount of time so that's how I judged how good a shape my dog was if there was one of those things didn't happen one of those two things either of them didn't happen where it took longer during the running stage for my dog to cool down after a workout or it took longer during the strength stage for my dog to cool down that's when I might give him a day of rest that's it so that's how you monitor your dog that's how I monitored my dogs anyways what are the results at the end at, during the workout and what are the results at the end of the workout if something's off in either one then i either need to back off on the work or they need another day of rest and most of the time they went smooth my keep went exactly the way i have it written in my uh in my keep book but sometimes you have to adjust and a lot of times i had to do that with uh dogs i borrowed from other people or dogs that people got from me 
or they bred to one of my dogs and they brought them back later for me to use because they weren't raised the same way as my dogs were. They couldn't handle my keep the same way my dogs could. So I would have to do less to get them in good shape. And that's one thing that, uh, you know, I had a hard time understanding. I was stubborn and a lot of people do. You see a dog want to work hard, so you let them do it. And you let them increase it. And you let them work as hard as they want to. And that's what can burn them out. Because just like a show, just like schooling, just like a workout, how it ends is matters more than how it begins. So I want, always wanted my dog wanting more after the work is done and I put them up. And when I come out to work them, they understand, they have a clock in their head that it's time to work. I want them to be raring to go. Sometimes they'll cry for it. They understand that, hey, it's time to work. And they'll be yipping, yapping, jumping around, running their chain. Or, or if you have them in a kennel or inside the house, you know, they're nervous, a lot of energy. They're bumping around and all that because they know it's time to work and they want to get out there and do it. That's another, another indication of the condition in your dog. If they don't have something left and still want to work after a workout, you're doing too much. If they're not rip-roaring, raring to go before it's time for the workout, you're doing something wrong. So those are indicators of where the dog's mind is and in what kind of condition he is in. So again, this is a short video. I just wanted to cover that. People were asking me, but that's one of the ways or two of the ways more specifically how I work my dogs and uh, judging their mannerisms, their behavior of, uh, you know, that showed me, you know, what kind of condition they were in. And like I said, the next one will be on the last week. I'll cover some more stuff and uh, hopefully that'll help too. So again, thank you.